This is the first video in a series that we're going to do on the Automation Anywhere Salesforce Connector. And this is a tutorial series, so we're going to go through a couple different parts here. I'm going to explain all of this, but this is all about how you can set up the Salesforce Connector for Automation Anywhere and be able to integrate your Salesforce environment with Automation 360 bots. Let's take a look. So first off, what is the Automation Anywhere Salesforce Connector? So it's a connector that's available in the Salesforce App Exchange, and you can install it directly from App Exchange, and then you can set it up and configure it to integrate directly with your Automation 360 control room. And that allows you to do things like launch bots directly from Salesforce. You don't have to go into the control room, you don't have to select a bot runner, you don't have to do all of that kind of stuff. You can actually just launch a bot directly from Salesforce. So this is a great way for people who are Salesforce users to be able to integrate with what's going on in the RPA space, but not necessarily have to know anything about like bot runners and connections and stuff like that. So this is a great way to really build automation anywhere directly into your Salesforce environment. The thing that I really like about it is that it's a two-way communication. So you can not only trigger bots from Automation Anywhere and you know have them go do some work or a lookup or complete a transaction or connect to some system that doesn't have an API, but they can also write data back to Salesforce. And so as soon as that bot is finished, it's able to call back to Salesforce to update the Salesforce object that it was called from. So that might mean, hey, I'm working on a case. I need to you know, kick off a bot, the bot's gonna go do some work, the bot will then update the case after it does its work. So it's great for both methods, right? If you just wanna kick off a bot and hey, here's some information from Salesforce, go and run, or hey, here's some information from Salesforce, I need you to do an update, I need you to do an insert, I need you to do a delete, the bot can take care of that, right? And so that's the really cool thing about using this connector. Now I mentioned that we're gonna be doing this in three parts because it's kind of long and I wanna make sure that you're really only watching the segments that apply to you. If you have a ton of experience with Salesforce and you've already got things like a connected app set up, you can probably ignore part of this first tutorial, um, but you'll probably wanna hang with us for parts two and three. If you have no experience with Salesforce and you just wanna try this out, follow along with me. I'm gonna go from the very beginning, we're gonna register for a Salesforce dev account and we'll set everything up from scratch. So. Part one is gonna be setting up the Salesforce environment and installing the Automation Anywhere Salesforce connector. There's more to it than that. We've gotta create a certificate, we've gotta create a connected app, we're gonna create a permission set. Uh, we're also gonna go through and uh, configure all of those items as well, uh, in addition to installing our Automation Anywhere Salesforce connector. The second tutorial will be on configuring the connector and setting up your Automation 360 control room. And so we're gonna have to configure the connector. Somehow the connector is gonna have to talk to our control room to be able to know, hey, which bots can I run? With which user account do I authenticate? We will do bot configurations as well. So we'll do all of that in part two. And there's gonna be a role that we're gonna set up on the control room side, as well as a user account that we'll set up on the control room side. And I'll talk about why that's important uh, in that next video. And then the third part is going to be kind of the culmination of all of this combined where we're going to be building a bot that's going to receive values. It's gonna do a lookup for data and then it will update data in Salesforce. And so that's gonna be kind of a, a longer video what we're gonna go through. We'll do the configuration for a bot on the Salesforce connector. We'll also go through and build the full bot. We'll have like a little dummy app that it's gonna do a lookup on. We're gonna read from that dummy app and then we'll update the Salesforce object on return. And then we'll test that from the Salesforce interface just to make sure it's working correctly and talk about where you can go from here, okay? So if you're hanging with us for part one of this, right, our setup and install, we're gonna do a couple things here. First, we wanna make sure we can register for a dev account. Fortunately, Salesforce makes that incredibly easy. It's also really fast, so I'll show you that. Uh, we'll generate a self-signed certificate. We're gonna need that for our connected app to make sure that it's at least somewhat secure. We're gonna create and configure that connected app. So we'll go through, set that up, we'll give it a name. We'll talk about doing things like easing IP restrictions, um, setting up OAuth and things like that. We're gonna create and configure a permission set. That permission set is gonna allow us to associate users with our connected app. And then finally, we will end the video with installing the Automation Anywhere Salesforce connector. So we're gonna install that directly from App Exchange. We'll see how that looks, we'll install it. We'll also talk about what you can do with it with the kind of freemium model where, hey, you get like three bot configurations to start. If you wanna do more than that, then it's a, a certain amount per year. 
So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna jump over to my, jumping over to my web browser now. So uh, this is the registration process. And let me refresh this so I can give you the actual URL. So it's developer.salesforce.com slash sign up. You're gonna go through here and fill out your first name, last name, email address. Obviously you, you can read fields. Um, go through and start filling that out and you will get um, details in your email about your URL for your Salesforce environment. You'll set up a username and password, stuff like that. To keep the video succinct, I have uh, already set that up, but I've done nothing else in my environment. All I've done is just registered an account and set up my username and password, uh, but nothing else is done. So if you want to pause the video here and set up your Salesforce dev environment, you can do that. Uh, we'll have the link here uh, in the description below, but um, go and do that. Now, we talked about we need to do a couple things. So I'm gonna sign into my Salesforce environment. Like I said, I just now created this one uh, and it's gonna allow me to sign into essentially just a totally fresh environment. So I signed up with my AA Illustrates login. Let's go ahead and log that guy in. Okay, so this is going to load our Salesforce interface and it's gonna load it in the setup screen. And this is where we're going to be doing a lot of configuration. We talked about a couple of things we wanna do. The first we wanna do is create our certificate. So I'm gonna go down to uh, security or settings here on the left-hand side and then security. Oh, that should be a carrot that I can open. There we go. And then I can go to the certificate and key management link. And this is gonna allow us to create a, uh, a self-signed certificate. Uh, you could import one from an existing key store if you wanted. We're gonna work on the assumption that we don't have one already. So we're just gonna create a brand new self-signed certificate. So I'm gonna click on that link. And maybe it's gonna launch. Okay, now for our certificate, there's really not a whole lot to it, right? We're, gonna, we're just gonna give it a name and a label and then we're gonna be able to download it. And we'll see that we have to upload this later on, but uh, for right now, I'm just gonna give it a name. So I'm gonna say um, uh, SF Connector Cert. And I'm gonna copy this name to my clipboard. We will need this later on. If I tab out of that field, it's also going to copy the same value from label to unique name. You don't have to do it like that. I'm leaving them the same though, so I'll hit save. And at this point, it should give me the option to download my certificate. So I'm gonna click on the download certificate button and download that certificate locally. And it's gonna say, hey, are you sure you wanna keep this file? Uh, it is a CRT file. I'm just gonna hit keep and I will have downloaded that locally. Now mine's just called SF Connector Cert. If you named yours the same, awesome. If you didn't, just whatever you named it, we'll have to remember that later on because uh, we will need the name of that as well as the file. Okay, so we've got our security set up. We've got our self-signed certificate. The next thing we wanna do is set up our connected app. So I'm gonna go into apps here and click on the app manager. Now, these are all of the both classic and lightning apps that are already in my environment. This is just like what loads in when I load that default developer Salesforce environment. What we're gonna do up here in the right hand corner is click new connected app. And it's gonna walk us through all these fields for setting up our connected app. Uh, I'm just gonna call this one, uh, let's call it automation 360 connection. Let's call it connected app. That probably makes more sense. I'll tab through that for my API name. For your contact email, uh, I'm just giving the same email that I gave when I registered for this dev environment. So I'm gonna say a illustrates bot at gmail.com. You can fill out the rest of these details if you want. They're not actually required. So I'm gonna skip down here to our uh, OAuth. So we do wanna enable OAuth settings and we'll also enable for device flow. What this means is I can actually have bots that are invoked either by a user or they can also be invoked through a Salesforce flow. And so if you're building out a flow in Salesforce, you might have like, hey, this one event occurred 
and then things three, four, and five also happened. And then I'm triggering a bot, right? And I want that bot to automatically be triggered. It doesn't need to be triggered by a human. By clicking that, it allows me to uh, basically put a bot into that entire process or into that app flow. We are gonna check this box that says use digital signatures. And this is the first time we're going to need our certificate. So I'm gonna hit choose file here. And I will grab that CRT file that we were just working on. Mine's called SF Connector Cert. And I will upload that. Now we need to set up some scopes for OAuth. If you are an experienced Salesforce developer or if you're working with a Salesforce admin in your environment, they may give you more specific guidance on the you know, particular scopes that are needed here. I'm just gonna go with the very basic that we need our bot to, um, let's see, access and manage your data through API. And then I'm also gonna go down and say, perform requests on your behalf at any time. Okay, so those are the only two permissions that we have to worry about. All right, everything else on here should be fine. So I'm gonna go down and hit save. And it's gonna give us a message that says, hey, this could take 10 minutes to take effect. So far, I haven't actually run into it taking 10 minutes, especially with our you know, pretty basic configuration there. Um, but do beware that it might take a little bit for your app to be set up. Now, the first thing we wanna do on our app is it's important that we relax IP restrictions. Um, when I originally started interfacing with Salesforce from Automation Anywhere, I had a lot of trouble figuring out like, why does this work on my machine, but it won't work on my bot runner? And the reason is because of IP restrictions. So I'm gonna click on this Manage button here. And we're gonna click the Edit Policies button. You can also manage your connected app from over here as well. That's just, I was just clicking through it because that's how we got there. Uh, so for permitted users, I'm gonna leave this as all users may self-authorize. And then for IP rela relaxation, man, I cannot say that today. Uh, relax IP restrictions. And so the reason I'm doing that is because I wanna make sure that Salesforce is gonna accept an API call from my machine, which you know I don't know what my IP address is, but whatever my public IP address is. But I also wanted to accept calls from the IP address of my bot runner, which is on uh, GCP, I think. So keep that in mind when you're setting this up, right? Like this is how we're gonna do it for this demo and for this tutorial. If you're working in an organization and you have a Salesforce admin who can give you guidance on how you're gonna do this IP relaxation within your organization, it might be like every, every IP that starts with a certain prefix we're gonna accept, uh, you can set that up with them. But for right now, we're working in a dev environment. This is just for us to understand how this kind of stuff can be set up. I'll hit save. Okay, thinking back to our PowerPoint, the next thing we said we wanted to do was um, create a permission set. So I'm gonna go over here on administration down to users and then permission sets. And we're gonna create a new permission set and that will allow us to uh, create a permission set that we can um, coordinate with our connected app that we just created. So I'm gonna click on the new button here. I don't wanna create a new view, I wanna create a new permission set. I give my permission set a label, so I'm gonna say automation 360 connector permission set. You know, something that just rolls off the tongue. Uh, I know that's a terribly long one. Name yours, whatever you want. You really won't have to reference this name ever, so, uh, but you will see it, right? So when you look at your permission sets, you wanna know which one is actually yours. Uh, and I will hit save on that. Now, once that permission set has been created, we wanna assign connected apps. So I'm gonna click on this to assign connected apps to my permission set. I'll hit the edit button here. Actually, you know what? I don't think we can edit because we don't have one yet. Uh, well, here's my connected app. So I'm gonna select that and I'll add it and hit save. Perfect, that worked. And then the last thing I wanna do is click on this manage assignments up here. And I will add assignment. And this is where I'm adding an association between a user to my, um, to my permission set. So this is what's connecting the connected app plus the user, and that's my permission set. 
So I'm just going to select myself, which is what I had uh, registered with, and hit assign. Cool. So that part is done. Uh, right now we have created our certificate. We have uh, created that connected app. We've done our permission set. We've configured the permission set to work with our connected app and our uh, existing user that we registered for the environment with. The last thing we want to do is we're going to go to apps and the app exchange marketplace. Uh, we're going to install the automation anywhere um, connector. So if I do a search in app exchange up here for automation anywhere and hit enter, I see the automation anywhere RPA bots for Salesforce app. It does say $1,000 per year. You'll see that once you install it, it's actually, maybe it has this in the term someplace. Uh, I don't know where it is. Uh, anyway, but I, I've used it, so I know that it's a freemium model. And the way that it works is you can have three bot configurations in your environment. And if you want to do more than three bot configurations, then you would need to actually buy the license. But don't worry, this isn't going to charge you. If you just hit get it now, you're not automatically going to get billed or something like that. Uh, this is just going to install into your dev environment. So it does ask that you have a coordination between your app exchange login and your... Um, Salesforce environment. So I'm going to hit open login screen. And I think I should be able to apply the same credentials. Yeah, I'll just hit allow. I think it associates the same credentials that I use to register for my dev account that I can use for app exchange. Cool. So I'm going to install here into this org. If you have a sandbox, you could install there. I'm just installing right here because this is my dev environment. And it is going to ask me to do a registration. So I'll go ahead and fill this out. Um, someone's going to be not so excited to follow up with this lead. Let's go. I'll put my real email here. And you can probably fill out your details. I would suggest not filling out mine. I've read the terms and I'll hit confirm and install. Now the installation of this app uh, does actually take, I think it does say it can take for up to 10 minutes. Oh, hold on one second. Uh, install for admins only or install for all users. I'm gonna install for admins only. Admins still have the ability to uh, push this out to other users, but I'm going to install for admins only for right now. You could always change that in the future. Okay, so anyway, like I was saying, this does take a minute to actually go through the install. So we're going to end the video here. Go ahead and let yours finish its install. Uh, it may take a minute. You'll get an email in your um, inbox, whatever you your email address that you registered for the Salesforce dev environment. They'll send you an email when this application has finished installing. And then you can go through to the next tutorial where we'll start to configure that and set it up and things like that. Okay, so we've just laid the baseline here, right? This is our groundwork for being able to eventually do a configuration on this and then eventually do bots that are able to integrate with Automation Anywhere and Salesforce. Okay, hopefully you're able to follow along with this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the chat below or in the comments. We'll be sure to address those. My name is Micah Smith. Go be great.